What is going on guys, it's Modded Warfare here. Welcome back to another episode of PS3 Tutorials. So in this episode, we're going to be looking at running emulators on our jailbroken PS3 so that we can run games from previous generation consoles on our jailbroken PlayStation 3. Now, we kind of touched on this a little bit in episode 5 when we looked at running PSP, PS1 and PS2 games on your jailbroken PS3. So if you're looking to run those specific games, check episode 5. It's a full tutorial covering how to do that. But in this video, we're going to be looking at other emulators to allow us to run other games from other systems. So, for example, games like, you know, Atari games, Super Nintendo, Nintendo Entertainment System, Sega Master System, Sega Saturn, Game Boy, Game Boy Advance, Game Boy Color, and many other different games from other consoles that you can run on your jailbroken PS3. So if you head over to your computer and you go to store.brewology.com, which will be linked in the description, click the Emulators tab. And this will give you a list of the majority of the emulators that are available, the homebrew emulators that are available for your jailbroken PS3. So as you can see, there are many different emulators here that you can choose from. So, you know, you can have a play around with the different emulators. But I'm only going to be covering one in this video, which is going to be RetroArch. Um, because RetroArch is not just the biggest homebrew emulator available for the PS3, it's also the most frequently updated and it's a multi-system emulator which means it can run games from multiple different systems in the one app whereas a lot of these other uh, emulators are just for one specific console whereas as you can see here RetroArch works to run games from Sega Genesis slash Mega Drive, MAME, uh, also NES, uh, SNES, Game Boy Color, Game Boy Advance and more. So quite a lot of different games from different systems that you can run from just this one emulator. So if you go ahead and download the latest build, click here. It does say CEX, so I'm assuming that means it's probably not going to work on a, a DEX console. Um, I haven't covered converting CEX to DEX yet, so if you've been following this series so far, then you should still be on a CEX custom firmware anyway, so it shouldn't be a problem. So just click the button and it will download the package file, and I have it right here. So there's a couple of different ways that you can install this. Um, basically, you can either put it on a USB drive, and then put all of your ROMs also on the USB drive, so you can create like a, a ROMs folder on your USB drive. So I'll create a ROMs folder here. Go into that folder and then just copy all my ROMs, which are my games from for the various different systems. I've got Mario Tennis, which is a Game Boy Color game, I believe. Um, Sonic the Hedgehog, which is, of course, a Sega Master System or Genesis game. And, you know, uh, Super Mario Kart, SNES, and uh, Alex Kidd and Miracle World, which I believe is also a Sega Master System game. So I'm going to copy those into that ROMs folder. They're only, you know, several hundred kilobytes, so it doesn't take long to copy them in. Whereas the package file for the emulator is about 500 megabytes, so it's quite large compared to some of the other homebrew apps we've been installing recently. Now make sure your USB drive is formatted in FAT32 format, and then you're good. You can unplug your USB drive and plug it into your PS3. The other way to install this, and this is the more convenient way in my opinion, is to use an FTP client like FileZilla or WinSCP, which uh, I showed how to set up in episode two. So you can remotely connect to your PS3's hard drive over your network. On the PS3, get your PlayStation 3's IP address by going into the system settings and then going to system information and you'll have your IP address in there if you're connected to your network on your PS3. Type that IP address into the host box in FileZilla. Put 21 as the port number and quick connect. If you get a message popping up, just click OK and it will remotely connect to your PS3's hard drive. And then from there, you can go into Dev HDD 0 and then go into the Packages directory and then copy the RetroArch package file in there and that will copy directly over your network to your PS3's hard drive. Okay, and there we go, it's now installed. And then you should already have a ROMs folder in your hard drive, so just put all of your ROMs in there. Um, if you don't have a ROMs folder already on your hard drive, just create one. Um, I think this ROMs folder gets created by either Multiman or your custom firmware, um, so you'll probably already have a ROMs folder in the hard drive. And of course, you can reorganize this if you want, you know, create a, a new folder called Sega and put all your like Sega Genesis games in there, 
have an NES folder for all your NES games and organize it if you want, um, just to make it a bit neater. But it doesn't actually really matter where you put the ROMs. RetroArch allows you to browse your whole hard drive for the ROMs uh, and any external storage. So, you know, it doesn't really matter at the end of the day. But there's a ROMs folder on the hard drive already, so you might as well just put them in there. All right, so now we can go over to our PS3 and head over to Game, go to Package Manager, install package files. If you put them on the USB drive, then make sure your USB is plugged into the PS3, then select Standard and it should show up there. Just select it and it'll install the package file from your USB drive. If you installed it to your hard drive with FTP, then head to PS3 System Storage and it should show up in there as well and you can go ahead and select it to install the emulator. Now this is again a 500 megabyte package file so it will take a little while to install here. Okay, there we go. So it's now installed RetroArch. So all we have to do now is run it. All right, so here we are on the actual RetroArch app itself. So to actually load your games, you're gonna to want to go down to load content and then browse for your games. So if we go to dev HDD zero, and then go down to ROMs, which are down here. And then there's my ROMs that I put on the hard drive. And of course, if I want to load from the USB drive, then there's USB 000. And there's the ROMs folder I put on the USB drive with the same games inside. So all you have to do is run the game. So let's try Mario Tennis first. So when you run the game, it asks you which core you want to use to load the game with. So there's three here for the Game Boy Color. So I'll just pick the top one. It really depends on performance and quality. Like if you're running one and you're finding that maybe the frame rate's a little low or there's some weird artifacts on screen, then you can try one of the other cores and it might fix it. Um, but generally the top one is normally okay. So if we start this, we should be able to see it working. There we go. And then it configures the controller, press start. And there we go, as you can see, it's working absolutely fine. And if I press uh, the start and select button at the same time, it brings up a menu here. We can go ahead and uh, close content and load a different uh, game. So when you close content, it'll go back to the menu, press circle, go to load content again. And it's a little annoying having to go to dev HDD zero and then scrolling down to try and find the ROMs folder every single time you want to load another ROM. So a little trick you can do is go to um, the settings here and go down to directory and then go to the downloads directory and change it. So if you select the downloads directory and you change it to wherever your ROMs are, uh, for example, right here, so I can go here and say use this directory and now that's my downloads directory. So now when I go to load content, I can just go to downloads and then my games show up right here instead of having to go through all the different directories to find the ROMs folder. So now I can load a different game like uh, Sonic the Hedgehog, which is of course is a different platform. This is a Sega Master System or Genesis game. And as you can see, it loads up no problem. And as far as I can tell, it's running pretty damn smoothly. Not sure of the exact frame rate. There probably is a frame rate counter you can bring up. That's the other thing about this emulator is that it has lots and lots of different options uh, that you can configure. Latency isn't too bad here. So yeah, it's pretty good. So if, you, if I press start and select at the same time, for example, you've got the ability to take screenshots. You can sit, uh, create save states. Um, you can also, you know, rewind the settings. There's cheats. So if you have any cheat codes you can add, uh, change the controls, all kinds of different stuff you can do from within here. Let's close content again. And for example, if we want a frame rate counter, let's see. Um, I think frame rate is in on-screen display, on-screen notifications. There you go, display frame rate. So you can put up a little frame rate counter and see what our performance is here. Let's load content, downloads. And then go for uh, what one we've not done yet, Mario Kart. So this is SNES. As you can see, there's quite a few different SNES cores that you can select. It figures the controller automatically and we're good to go. Okay, I guess... Oh no, frame rate counter is working. Ooh, I might have found a game that it can't handle. Yeah, it looks like I just got a bad ROM. That's unfortunate. I don't think, I don't think that's the emulator. I think that's just the ROM. 
the ROM I downloaded is no good. Let's try, or either that or it's the frame rate counter, but I don't see why that would interfere with it. So let's tr let's try um, Alex Kidd in Miracle World with the frame rate counter. Sega Master System game, see if it runs that okay. There we go. Yep, it's running absolutely fine. I mean, 59.994, I mean, that is what, double NTSC, basically 60 frames per second. So, yeah, as you'd expect with a little, like, 2D platformer like this, but, yeah, you get the idea. So, so yeah, now you can run all of your favourite games from these old generation consoles on your PS3. Now, you may be wondering what about, you know, things like GameCube games or Nintendo 64 games, Dreamcast and other other games that are not quite as old as uh, as like Super Nintendo games and stuff, there is still a way to run those games through Linux. And that's what we're going to be covering probably in the next episode. We're going to be looking at um, installing Linux on the PS3, which allows you to do many different things because it's a whole uh, operating system, computer operating system on your PS3. But when you have Linux running on the PS3, one of the benefits is you can also install uh, emulators like Muppin64 for running Nintendo 64 games um, and uh, and Dolphin for running you know GameCube games and stuff as well so don't be too disheartened if you can't find uh, the emulator you're looking for in the list on Brewology or in RetroArch because because there are of course other emulators that you can access on Linux. There are also other cores you can download here in RetroArch so if you go to load core and one of the cores is not here, then you can go ahead and uh, download core. If you scroll down to the very bottom, as you can see, there's a lot to choose from. You can go ahead and download core, and then that will check the internet and check the server and, see, and list all the available cores uh, for this version of RetroArch. And then you can download, you know, whichever one you need. But yeah, if you can't find the emulator that you're looking for, then don't worry too much because we will be uh, installing Linux in the next episode and I'll be showing you guys uh, how to access some other emulators on Linux. If you want to quit out of RetroArch you just select quit RetroArch and that will quit you back to the XMB. So hope you guys enjoyed the video or found the information useful. If you did please leave a like and subscribe and I'll hopefully see you guys in the next episode.